Holy shit, ladies. Welcome to this fucking amazing meeting that's about to happen today. I'm really excited to be with you. Um, so if this is your first kind of meeting or webinar with me, let me kind of give you a quick run through. Um, and we're, I'm gonna give everybody at least a minute or two to join us and to get settled in. And I also am gonna be bringing on our uh, guests for our panel discussion today, which I'm really excited about. As soon as they, as soon as they arrive, they'll be here anytime. Um, so this is, if this is your first meeting with me or webinar or live class or whatever format we're on go to webinar so this is the deal um we're actually not going to be bringing videos on today just because we want to make sure that the streaming is really clear that you guys hear us loud and clear um it's also going to allow us to to make sure that we're able to upload and get the information back out to everybody later with ease um also there is a super nifty handy question box that you guys have uh towards the bottom of your little uh control panel there so I want you guys to feel free um, at any time during this discussion to jump in, to ask questions, to share your story. Uh, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll kind of go through and slow us down in the discussion panel and actually read through your guys' questions and comments uh, as, as quickly and, and as live as I can um, as it's kind of going, going down. So yay, hi, I see you, Kim, uh, Kim says whoop whoop. Holly's in the house, Angela's here. Super nifty chat box thing, says Angela. I know, it's our favorite super nifty chat box. We use it all the time. Also, so Mike, there's actually a few of uh, my clients or Kristen's clients or some of my other clients' clients that are in here as well. So you guys are familiar uh, with this platform too and know that there might be times where if we see somebody making a really good point or something, we might offer to unmute you and have you jump on with us. So if anybody wants to contribute or has a story that they wanna share, um, they wanna kinda get brought into the mix, feel free to just ask. Uh, we're totally happy with giving everybody uh, airtime, so to speak, if, you're, if you'd like that. Some of you guys would rather just listen in and that's totally fine too. Hi, Celine, Celine's in the house, Cassie's in the house. I'm so freaking excited for this too. You guys have no idea. Um, oh, yay, all right, cool. Both of, um, our uh, ladies that are joining us for the panel discussion are now here. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Crystal. So it's Kristen and Crystal. Ladies, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you for a moment. Hello. Kristen. So that's Kristen. Then we got Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hey, guys. Hey, ladies. Hello. All right. Some dudes in here too, but hi. Oh, is it Riley Rue or Colleen? I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying in general, there might be some dudes in here. I want to say, hey, ladies. We've got quite a decent crowd, actually. We've got uh, Victoria, Tiffany, Christina, Lori, Simone's here. Oh my God, can I just start with the fucking bit of gold that Simone threw down yesterday on Facebook in response to one of my uh, kind of posts around just, you know, women. Um, she said, you know, hashtag not all men, we've all heard that. And then she was like, and then I had this realization, yes, but it's all women. Right, and that's really why we're getting together because there's such a global kind of thing going on with just being a woman in the world right now. And there are ways that it's actually impacted and infiltrates, you know, even the dog industry. And that's why we're all kind of coming together. Um, I do want to make a couple quick notes before we technically get started. Uh, so what we'll be doing, I'll kind of be hoping to guide the, the Q&A, so I'll kind of ask a question, throw it over to our panel here. Um, but I also want to do a quick introduction of who we've got on with our panel. Um, yay, all right, so let me introduce Crystal first, and then I'll let you kind of do your own little intro as well, and then we'll move over to Kristen. Um, so Crystal closed. I love Crystal because she's actually got a long history of leadership in the industry. Crystal, you were training trainers back for Triple Crown, right, like back in the day. Yeah, so I started, I went to school at Triple Crown back in like 07. And then after I graduated there, I was asked to stay and be an apprentice. Um, and then after my apprenticeship, they asked me to stay on and write and develop with them a distance education program. Because at the time, like ABC behavior was really popular, that kind of stuff. And so um, I spent a year developing and writing that distance ed program with them. And then I was a distance education instructor for that program. Um, and then also I, I helped with instructing in the academy here and there a little bit as well. 
um, for other trainers. And uh, then I, I found that I was behind a desk a lot more than I wanted to be, honestly. <laughs> and so then, um, so then I, I took off and I started, uh, uh, I took my wings and I came back up to the Midwest. And yeah, been- yeah. Well, and, and you also like help them kind of develop their business part, part too, like that whole story. We can get into that story later, but you, you know, some of the stuff that you did, like your business plan and everything was actually like taken on as, as examples of what to do. And, and this is where I think it's so fascinating. I see this so often where there's women that have done things behind the scenes, sitting at the desk or whatever, and then they get put into the businesses or the models of what the men go out and promote, which is great. I, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's so many strong women that are actually responsible for what's, what's out there right now. It's, it's just fascinating to me. And so Crystal, you're, you're one of those women kind of that has had been behind the scenes, but has really made quite a big impact um, in other people's businesses as, as well as your own. So thank you for joining us. I'm just really hey, super- I'm excited to be here. Yeah, that you're here to, to help with this. And then um, Kristen, I don't even know where to be. Kristen's a fucking powerhouse. She's uh, you've got your, uh, like your actual like BA in business, like business management and mm-hmm. you know, your MBA, right? My MBA. And, yeah. Yeah. Also business coach in the dog world and also we're involved in just a ton of leadership. So do you want to kind of tell, tell ladies a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So as Maggie said, I grew up basically right from college. I went into the corporate world and I was one of the youngest people and the only female in my company at the time, it's a major Fortune 50, not fi- not 500 corp- corporation that I was literally sitting with the board of directors when I was 22 years old. So I have a lot of experience around kind of the red tape, around the back end administration of things when it comes to like high level leadership positions, especially with board of directors and like we want to say the good old boys club. Um, yeah. So I've been, you know, I've been doing business coaching for a few years now at this point. And I've noticed, especially with a lot of my clients, my just like Maggie's clients, all the clients we have and we cultivate through this community of amazing entrepreneurial women, a lot of these women are keeping themselves playing small because they're afraid of backlash and they've seen stuff, right? So that's basically a little bit of background all about me. I don't want to take too much time on the mic with this. But yeah, this is kind of just about me and I'm super excited to be here and talk about and share some experiences because even Maggie, like I actually shared this with her not too long ago. Sorry, my garage door is opening below me. Um, one of the things I've I've experienced myself what have been unsolicited messages through my Facebook, through my Instagram, even friggin' people calling me and leaving me dirty ass messages just because they saw my marketing. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to talk about it. And really, thank you, Maggie, for putting this together. I think it's friggin' awesome. Mm. Yeah, you're and and you guys are welcome. And I'm just I'm glad to see such a really strong positive turnout today because I think what we're going to be covering today is so critical and it's so undercovered, um, undercover and undercovered, right? Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not going over these things openly in the industry right now. And, you know, I think what we all have in common is that we've all experienced some level of being shut down, being humiliated, being, you know, told that we're not, you know, big enough or strong enough or smart enough or whatever the case is. And I think even I was having a conversation with Emily, which Emily, is another very, very powerful woman student and client of mine that runs like a basically over a million dollar a year business now. She's she's a powerhouse. And she also is not taken as seriously as she should be at times, but she's pretty hardcore. She doesn't mind so much. But we were chatting about the recent thing. You guys all saw the drama that happened the last couple of days with um not Jeff Gelman, the other guy, Sean O'Shea, right? I think everybody saw that, even if yep. you didn't. But the, so we were talking and it's like, well, neither she or I, we don't necessarily agree with how he trains. We don't disagree with the message. We're kind of looking at the whole thing going, well, it's almost a joke because it's just an opportunity for people to jump on one another. And as we're just kind of dissecting and debriefing a little bit, the thought occurred to both of us that had he mentioned a bunch of women trainers names, just think about this for a second, just say it in theory, had he mentioned three different women trainers Do you think that people would have taken that much offense to it and had people like Larry Crone been professing their undying love for those people whose names were mentioned? Because we see when women are spoken about like that, nothing really happens. People tend Mm -hmm. to be like, oh yeah, you know, people tend to agree 
rather than disagree. So it's just an interesting dynamic because like Kristen mentioned, we have so many, my, both my clients, Kristen's clients, uh, even a lot of the people that Crystal's worked with, by the way, it's Kristen and Crystal, and then I'm Maggie Christina, not to confuse anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've all had these female clients that are, um, they're better at what they do than, then honestly, some of the males we see having nothing necessarily to do with sex, but just to do with who has a stronger skill set at times. And the, the majority of these women that are so strong, I think of like Ashley Carpenter, for example, is has been slowed down and belittled or talked or whatever that has had so many experiences to make her feel like she shouldn't be out there. And so there really is, the truth is for the strong women in the industry, there is still an underlying um, kind of assumption that this is the type of stuff that we have to deal with. Even in mo most recent um, months, knowing about this person we haven't necessarily talked about publicly yet, but I will in the coming weeks, um, who routinely sends dick pictures to women literally all over the world and gets away with it over and over again because he's a positive trainer. And people people don't want to, they want to excuse that kind of behavior. Um, and actually one of the first things that I wanted to jump in as far as a question back to you guys and especially over to you, Kristen, is we know as a culture, like the last 30, 40 years, women have been working towards equal pay and equality in the workplace, right? And so I think the interesting thing is, so both Crystal and Kristen, you guys have experience working for other companies. Mm -hmm. And I think my understanding of sexism in the workplace is it makes sense that it exists more, unfortunately, but it makes sense that it exists more within a corporate structure because people aren't self-employed, right? So I wanna kind of ask you guys what your thoughts are about the fact that in an industry where we're predominantly self-employed, we're still falling into that same pattern. And I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on what that looks like at life. Oh yeah, totally. So one thing, you know, coming from that corporate background, as a woman, you know, they always talk, it's so funny because I'm going to kind of not go on a rant, but if any of you guys ever worked in the corporate background, there is usually always an initiative and it's usually either diversity or woman quote unquote empowerment, which is hilarious because these boards, these committees are usually hosted by men. <laughs> and there's not, there's a lot of talk, but there's not a lot of action. However, being an executive leadership role myself, is as a woman in an industry, in a, any industry, and I'm gonna talk about the dog industry specifically in a second, is you essentially have, and this, I know everybody's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna defeat this, but no, believe me, I did this for 15 years. You essentially have to work 10 times as harder as your male counterparts that have less experience than you. Usually when you are presenting, you get spoken over and it's frustrating, right? And the thing too is, and this is what I've experienced on both ends, if you assert yourself, if you talk a little bit louder, and I've always had, I am gonna say I've been lucky, I've always had really good male mentors in the corporate world, but if you show a little bit of, non put together emotion you are all automatically classified as a fucking bitch and the rumors start that you're a bitch nobody likes to work with you you're difficult to work with however however if a male and again this is not man bash and this is not victimization if a male kind of raises his voice or he stands up for himself stands up for his team his department his organization he's hailed, hailed as a hero but the woman is usually like, oh, she's a bitch and she's really, she's dramatic in the workplace. You don't want to work with her. Oh, avoid working with her, right? And the thing is, and I think I talked about this yesterday a little bit on that post when I was kind of promoting this, what happens, and I see this in the industry too, through industry leaderships and kind of organizations, is you essentially, uh, you essentially have to play by the good old boys club rules in order to gain growth. You essentially have to mimic and copy the masculine traits of being overly assertive, but you also almost have to surrender your femininism and your nice, your kindness or whatever. Anyway, that being said, there is a massive disparity between salary. Um, at one point, I know somebody who is actually a level below me would just, you know, about, I mean, degrees don't really matter, but they were making almost, I think, 10% more than me, which is really large when you think about the six figures. And what I see now and what I see happening with a lot of ladies, especially people that I talk to and do webinars with, it, this almost translates into women not really valuing themselves. 
and I see it consistently and I see it, you know, people like, oh my God, I could never do this. Or while, you know, okay. Can I share this Maggie about Frank really quick? Sure. Sure. Go for it. Yeah. Go All for right. It. Is it cool? Yeah, no, go for it. Okay. So I also own a dog training business. I'm the CEO, co-founder, and it grinds my gears that we have a really high level, high program price. However, there are more women out there, some of my own clients that have more experience and more knowledge and background in specific types of training methods than my husband, and they're charging almost 10 times less. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that breaks my heart is like the the, the majority of, like that does show up in the numbers, right? When mm -hmm. I'm on the phone talking with people, the the difference between what women are charging versus men. And again, this isn't a, a, a knock on men at all. It just, no. the numbers don't lie. You know, some of my clients have heard me say, oh, let me look into my crystal ball, AKA my calculator, cause that bitch does not lie, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at the statistics, it's true. Like male trainers are technically charging vastly more in, mm -hmm. in a lot of those programs that we see. And it's just, it's just is what it is because it's never been questioned. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Um, even from, from the woman's perspective, a lot of women, it's like, uh, you know, I was working with one of, my, one of my new clients yesterday, we were talking about a price increase because she was already undercutting herself and we're looking at a healthy range and she automatically wants to give even more because we're so used to giving, like as, I feel like that's what we're, that's what we're taught to do, right? So mm -hmm. it's not to be helpful and to just be available and to just do all the things, <laughs> which uh, my clients that have kids know that that's, that's a huge fan of their existence as well. Um, yeah, Angela says you're pre-programmed to actually charge less. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, I wanted to slow down for a moment and then I wanna go over to Crystal um, here in a second. But I just, I'm reading through some of these comments and, you know, Holly's like, yes, I've, I've experienced this kind of stuff from an instructor before. Um, uh, Simone says that she finds it funny that oftentimes it doesn't matter if it's online discussions or even live in seminars. These things are happening, which is true. I cannot tell you, like, this is one of those issues. Had I not stepped into business coaching full time, I wouldn't have realized how much of an issue it is because I'm, I am one of those open people and I am a trusting person. I am a, I do create a safe place. So I hear from hundreds of people about really fucked up situations, live, like in-person stuff, not just online. Um, and it's, it fucking freaks me out. Rapes, attempted rapes, physical assault, sexual assault, uh, emotional brow beating. I mean, it doesn't just have to be the sexual stuff. So, uh, yeah, Kim, I mean, all of you guys are like, yes, we're experiencing this stuff. Okay, so Crystal, um, I wanted to make sure that we also get your take on this. Wow, what about you, what are, what's your experience kind of having been in an organization versus kind of out on your own? Like, what do you see? What are your thoughts about the fact that like, you know, we are self-employed, so why are, we, why are we still accepting this as a, as a, well, this is just how to climb up the ladder in the dog training world. <laughs> yeah, right. Deal with the dick pics because that's just the way it is. Yep. Well, yeah. And like, basically I have to say that I am, I feel like I have been very lucky in regards to who my mentors were. Um, like Rob Dunn, he was one of the main instructors there when I was along with Jesse Gabriel and they are like a couple. And so he was always very great. And uh, even the staff at Triple Crown was, I never had to worry about that kind of like skeeziness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, while I was there, I felt very safe. But however, there was a lot of like with the general manager, for example, or the owner or whatever, there definitely was a tinge of sexism in regards to taking seriously um, the female staff versus the male staff. Um, and that was something that I definitely witnessed while being there because at the time, at the time it was the world's largest training behavior facility. There were tons of events going on there all the time. And so everybody would kind of come and converge and be there for all these events from all over the country. And I would notice that, you know, the, like the, the men in the industry would be received so much more openly than the women like that would come and to do things there. Um, but that's just in the, gen in the industry as a whole, I feel. But then personally, um, when I worked for another trainer, she was a female business owner as well. Um, so I didn't have any concerns with that kind of stuff there. But when I, when I branched out on my own and I started my own business about eight, nine years ago, eight years ago now, 
oh my, I can't remember. But anyway, I have found that what is hard for me is, I don't know, like I don't mean to toot my own horn or be like whatever, but I've been told I'm pretty easy to get along with and I'm pretty welcoming and opening. Um, and I can, like people tend to like me um, if they're, if they're, but then if they have like the older men though, they tend to be intimidated by the fact that I can also flip to being very strong and not taking anything from them. And I have found over the course of building my business and trying to make it in this industry, but just make it as a business owner more specifically when it came to the point in my career where I was looking to expand into a facility and all of that kind of stuff, being taken seriously a as a dog trainer because <laughs> people are like oh can you really board this space or whatever and that stuff um but then also being a woman who is younger than the men so i've actually experienced more ageism along with the sexism um yeah. when trying to expand things like working with bankers for example i tried to work with so many bankers and they were men 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 I didn't realize this until I had a breakthrough with Maggie. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> like just yesterday, I think I was like, "Holy shit!" Um, the first, like the first time that I actually was able to get someone to take me seriously as a banker, it was actually a woman, um, and she admired this. The like, the, and I get all the time that I have such a strong personality, such a strong personality, um, and I really don't think that if I was a man, that I would be being told that like that it's a like it's, like it's a negative thing and then I have to adjust but more more I, I can remember one specific time I found that trying to go look at different spaces to be rented in our area there's a lot of older gentlemen that own these spaces a lot of you know men that own all of these different spaces that, that we're looking to expand into and I went a couple times on my own and it was so incredibly hard for them to take me seriously, even though I was showing the numbers of my business. Like, no, for real, I have a six figure business. I can afford this space, we're cool, right? And they just couldn't believe it and all this kind of stuff. And so I actually ended up incorporating my father-in-law who is amazing and a business owner himself. And he is so supportive and great, like the kind of man that I'm really glad, glad raised my husband, but when I brought him with me, everything changed. Mm. So all of a sudden there's a peer of theirs, a man. And I sat there and I literally witnessed the good old boys club right there with two men that are in business versus a woman who's younger in business. And I legitimately am talking to the, to the, to the owner of this space and I'm trying to talk to him and ask him questions. He legitimately shut me down and went to my father-in-law right in front of me and was like, for real, can she really support this space? Like, does she really have a solid enough business to make this work? And I was literally like, I'm standing right here, dude. I'm standing right here. Like I am like, it's just, oh, it was so incredibly frustrating. And I get well, that, that feeling that like pattern and trait is ingrained in our mm -hmm. society. And I see that with, because you don't see it. And I, I admit personally, when you're not at a certain level in your business, when you're not like really shining to people, you don't see the sexism as much because you just, there's no opportunity to encounter it. But as you become more successful, as you're growing, you start to end up with in these situations where you just kind of look back and you're like, well, what the fuck, right? For me, um, you know, I have been involved in around a lot of the guys and women around like IACP and different organizations for many years. I always got along with people, right? And then when it became brutally honest how successful I actually am and, and was, that's when it's like, well, wait a minute, she didn't need anybody's help, therefore she must be a fraud. And there was like this this turning point that happened and it's like they went from respecting me and having space for me to like complete disrespect in a variety of ways and it just blew my mind it's like wait I'm being treated like shit because I'm good at what I do like this literally it didn't make sense to me at the time until I realized that was really my wake-up call one of my wake-up calls around around sexism um by the way I want to read through some of these comments because there's some really good ones um, and then I'll pose another question to you ladies here. And that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of that, Crystal. <laughs> that was like, that yeah. was, 
freaking, I was, it's important, man, to be able to voice these things. Um, all right, so Simone, Simone shared that she was actually talked down to by a trainer that she hosted. And not only was she talked down to by, I assume, a male trainer that she hosted, but it was in front of one of her clients or a group of, of her clients. Imagine that. It's like you're going out of your way to host somebody. And I've literally, again, I've had this happen to me as well. And it's just like one of those, like, what the fuck? Are you for real? It's just, it makes your jaw drop. Um, Holly mentions that her instructor frequently used to drunk text her and it was super uncomfortable. Um, I'm like, yeah, if I had a fucking quarter for every time I've heard that kind of thing, it's fucking crazy. Um, Cassie uh, Coverdale uh, is shares with us, says that she's an engineering manager which girl, I feel like I understand the rest of it by just reading that first bit. She's an engineering manager for a manufacturing facility as her day job until she can justify switching into full-time dog training. I'm like, girl, hit me up because we'll make that happen. Um, she says, I cannot express how much I get spoken over, disrespected and not taken seriously in both her day job and as a dog trainer. She uh, goes on to say, it's prepared me and given me a spine, but it still fucking pisses me off. You know what? And I feel like Cassie, that last line just like that is so true. It's like, yeah, we all have a spine. We're all strong women, blah, blah, blah. We get it. We're prepared. We're aware. We don't go dress like hoes. Like what the fuck ever? We do all that, but that doesn't make it okay because we're just here trying to fucking work and do a goddamn good job. Right. So we're all we're all at that point where it just it fucking pisses us off too. She also goes on to say that she's 26 and doesn't and looks like she's 14, so it doesn't help either. I roll. Um, Kim shares when she was renting a space in building and the building needed upgraded to be up to code. Her business partner and, and we kicked out or got got kicked out because we wouldn't let it go. So I'm not sure what that. I'm not sure if I caught on to what that one was. When I was renting a space at a building and the building needed upgrades to be up to code. My business partner and I uh, were kicked out because we wouldn't let it go. I see. Was your business partner a woman? <laughs> that would be my question. Uh, Angela says these conversations make more make me more afraid to grow, more afraid to talk loudly. I like being invisible because it's safe. Well, let's talk. Okay. That's really, yeah, it's like that's why we need a safe place. I realized over the years, I'm like, that's literally what we're already all doing because in order to do your best work, you have to be able to grow in a safe environment. And that's like Crystal mentioned earlier when she was working for Triple, Triple Crown, yes, there was sexism in the, in the office. Yes, it was harder for a woman to be taken seriously. And at the time, that was the premier number one place to go to get an education. That's the thing is it's no longer acceptable to have that pattern in my mind. And that's part of what we need to be bringing forth in terms of solutions. Ironically, that was also going to be my next question to everybody. Oh, first, first, let me tell you guys a super quick story. Um, my clients, you guys have heard about like how much of a shit show my recent trip to Portugal was to go to a week long training uh, retreat and seminar with John Rogerson. And I get into this conversation with John Rogerson and we start talking about women like strong women trainers in the industry. And he and I actually approached the subject with him about, yeah, why aren't there more strong, strong trainers uh, or uh, why don't we see more of those women doing seminars and teaching that are strong trainers? Because I'm curious to know, because John has been in the industry for fucking 50 years, right? So I'm getting John's take and he's agreeing with me. He's like, yeah, there's a lot of strong women. What they need, this is what John said to me, what they need is somebody to teach them leadership and how to have the confidence to go out there and do it anyway, right? I'm, I'm on board at this point. I'm like, all right, there's actually kind of a running joke where at that point in the conversation, I leaned over and said, oh, hi, John, my name's Maggie. Uh, I do just that, nice to meet you, like sarcastically. But then he goes on to explain to me that in order to do that, there needs to be a dude. It needs to be a man because women are most uh, most likely to be able to, or they learn easier from a man because they took a poll one time 40 years ago. And it said that women prefer to learn from male instructors or some bullshit. And I just thought to myself, are you seriously telling me that, yeah, women definitely need to, to be coached through that and that you really think that it needs to be by a dude, that that would be the most effective? Sure, like women could do it too, but like it's a man's job. <laughs> the irony was thick, the irony was thick. So that I wanna kind of use to premise the next question out to both of you ladies. 
what do you think is either already in place or we need to be aware is in place or what we need to put into place in order to create safe environments for women in this industry, especially the business owners, to be able to grow and continue their education without having to put themselves at risk to this kind of behavior? I would say, first and foremost, first, <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go, Kristen, you go first. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ooh, I don't like to use the word um. But I would say, first and foremost, we have, you know, of course, leadership changes. You know, I hate to say it, leadership does change at the top. It is. However, what we need to do, and this is where I see a lot of women being failed right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm in the dog training industry. I'm not a physical trainer, but I see a lot of governing bodies failing their women members mm -hmm. um, through support, for, through facilitated conversations. And I'll give you an example. I know we're not talking about that male trainer, but that male trainer that has a very big history of sending unsolicited dick pics. Mm -hmm. um, a very big organization in the United States is hosting him for a seminar. And my husband's very aware of what's going on with this dude. And they sent a seminar a weekend away with this person. And my husband goes, is this this dude? I was like, yeah, he's like, oh, basically they're giving him an open, an open range weekend to uh -huh. prey upon vulnerable trainers. Cause it just was. So he actually sent an email and he, and he stated and outlined everything that was going on that he knows that other governing bodies have been connected and he, he's withdrawing his membership effective immediately, not to send him anything. And the fact that even a, a, a guy that's been in this organization for about 10 years said this, he was like one of the founding, not founding members, but one of the, you know, first members, mm -hmm. they didn't, they didn't get a response back. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, you know, like what Maggie's doing with the grassroots organization, that we need more of those. We need to foster safe places where it's not about the training methods. It's about nurturing at the roots of these ladies because there's new generations of dog trainers coming in consistently, consistently, consistently. So it's about finding and creating and fostering productive and supportive communities. Now I'm not saying like, oh, like, cause I know like when we talk about being triggered, it, it goes on like a whole lot of, you know, that's a whole Trumpism thing, but anyway, but fostering safe spaces where women can actually openly have discussions to where they're not under threat. They actually feel like, for example, for, I believe it was Angela, Angela, Angela's like, oh my God, I want to be invisible more. How the, you know, that to me, that to me is, that's a huge fucking problem because Angela is a fantastic fucking trainer. For me, I want to put Angela in the spotlight and put fucking glitter and circles and sugar around her. <laughs> and actually, I want to, I want to interject right, right, th right there because Aaron, which by the way, Aaron, if you're cool with it, I want to bring you in as an extra, extra, extra guest speaker um, in maybe five, 10 minutes because Aaron, you guys, I'd love to introduce you guys to Aaron. She's amazing. She's my soul sister. Very strong, very <laughs> fucking brilliant woman. Um, Aaron was at my house actually with one of the dick, the dick pit guy, one of those situations was happening. And, um, Aaron's fucking brilliant. And she actually wrote, uh, she's like, I'm done staying small because it makes men uncomfortable. Mm. I'm done staying small just because it makes men right. She says, I'm lucky and grateful. I have found and have, and just created one of those safe places. And it's made a really big difference in my attitude. But for real, though, working with an amazing kick-ass coach is 100% necessary, necessary, in my opinion, both for yeah. the space, but for the support and the learning so that we don't have to go fucking do it on uh, alone, right? Or go, we don't have to go out there and choose any of those programs or whatever, because there's there, everything you guys need is, is here, right? Mm -hmm. Or where she's at. Um, because that's part of the problem. Women are pitted against each other, divide mm -hmm. and conquer, and we need to come together. I fucking couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, I agree. It's okay, like, yeah, we need to be drinking. We need to be banding together and getting big, like bigger together. I remember yeah. like Angela was with me at the event up in New Jersey at that camp experience where we were all doing the team vagina and we were just loud and it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, 
Got her. Well, yeah, Crystal, you were there. Remember, we were like sitting there with the big V's and we're screaming vagina. We were just. So and, then, and then the one time that kids and a dog walk through. Yeah. Yes. And then that family walked through and we all laughed so hard. I'm like, that's where we need to be is in that space. Like we have like that's the space we need to be like in regardless of if we're sharing stories, or we're actually like boots on the ground learning stuff. Mm -hmm. but, oh, anyway, sorry. I totally jumped in there, Kristen. Please continue. No. <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's, that's, that's you know, Erin just actually hit it home. It's like, I feel like oh, the more speculation, or not the more speculation, but like you said, the more times you kind of grow and glow, I want to use the word glow up, even though it's kind of a silly term, the more you start glowing up, the more you start showing up, the more you start being authentically you is essentially, you know, maybe at a, a real level, maybe at a subconscious level, men get threatened and then what happens is they start talking and then the women that look up to them start actually you know start getting one-sided too mm. because i think as well it's like we need the female larry crone we need the female you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like, but she's actually committed in doing it fucking cool yes yes yeah. and that's the thing it's like one thing that drives me fucking insane okay i'm not gonna go on a rant here but i'm not is you know, we see reposts from quote unquote male leaders all the time. And I see so many brilliant women, brilliant fucking trainers, my clients include like an Ashley Carpenter sharing mm -hmm. these posts and these live videos. And I'm like, girl, you are more brilliant. Share that shit. And she's like, well, you know, they're going to pick me apart. And <sighs> I said, you know what? I said, this is, and um, again, this is not a male sexism thing, but it's like, I tell my clients that are fucking brilliant trainers to have more confidence than a mediocre white male. Because for you sharing and resharing different posts of like, you know, a Larry, and like, I love Larry. Like, I, I don't know him on a personal level, but I, I've dealt with him on a professional level or a Duke or somebody like that. We need more women like that. We need more women being able to kind of foster and nurture and step into that. Meaning it's mm. like, we can't throw somebody up like that, but as an organization, as a group, as a collective, as dog trainers, whatever your methodologies is, we need to start nurturing those future leaders. We need to start building those future leaders up. All right. That's my thought. Well, and, and building each other up. Like, um, yes. there was a conversation that had transpired between Simone and I, this is like a, a while ago, like a year and a half ago where, you know, it's so normal. Like anytime somebody decides to host an event, go look at who's actually actively offering events and mm -hmm. seminars and workshops, like 80% of them are dudes right? So just, it doesn't, we, we choose accidental sexism because that's just the opportunities in, in front of us. So I had had a chat with not just some, but like a, several of my clients that ha, that do host stuff. It's like, encourage, I encourage people to go find other people that they think are really good and encourage them to come teach, right? It's mm -hmm. like, that's, that's what I see so many of my clients doing with each other. I mean, Crystal, and uh, you're having that experience right now with Angela, you guys are sharing and it's just, it's that starting to help each other, give each other those experiences and to start to build each other up. That's where it's at. Having that level of organization, safe community. It's a game so, changer. Yeah. So actually, would you like to talk about that a bit or, you know, I mean, yeah. can answer the loaded question now? <laughs> Crystal? Me? Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so like, so like the question again was, what do we think needs to happen in the industry for a shift, basically in a nutshell? Yeah, yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. So I I can feel Angela's pain about... Mm, so I started out that way in my career with training other trainers, right? Um, in, a, in, a, in a good, safe environment. It was a good place to learn, honestly. It really was. Those people were great to me. Um, and when it comes to a safe place to learn, I'm glad I had that. When I left, what I found is I'm going to be brutally honest, but bitches be crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Like what I found was that women tend to be, what's that? I said, I love you, Crystal. Well, no, like here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Okay. So women, I think we all have competitiveness in us, but women take it to a whole nother level yeah. of like viciousness do you know what I mean so what I have experienced any time that I have stuck my neck out there throughout my career over the last 12 13 years 
is it has every single time when I have been attacked um, or judged or whatever, it's every single time been women. And I cannot tell you after being in this industry for so long and finding you, Maggie, and finding this community that you have built a safe place for women although you kept it more on the private end with us yeah it has yeah. been the most awakening empowering experience of my life and seeing that I know that that reluctant leadership that you say I have so much knowledge to share with young trainers and I have not stepped up into that position or started like Angela said like I'm scared to become more involved in the industry I was scared to be involved in organizations I was scared to be involved with with anything that had other trainers there that were particularly women because sorry about that I should I should mute my computer but anyway but I've just found that what needs to happen is we need to support each other and encourage each other and empower each other and stop being so damn competitive or judgmental or angry with other women because I think we tend to get like challenged more by other women than we may even men on a, on a deeper level when it, when it comes to being taken more seriously with each other. Absolutely. Well, and I want to actually uh, intercept here for a second. First of all, there's a couple of comments uh, that I want to read off. And then I actually have a quick question for Kristen. And then after that, we'll bring um, Aaron on to quick introduction. So Simone says from earlier when we were talking about like who we choose to write typically as men, she says, um, we as women need to stop putting guys on a pedestal. We need to put ourselves on a pedestal because we are just as good, if not better. Now she says not, if not, she said, and better. <laughs> so yeah, we are better. Oftentimes, and I agree, the, the women, the strong women that I've seen oftentimes do outshine the dudes. They're just not, they're just not put on that pedestal. Um, Kim does say, then says, I think women are so defensive because of the fact that we have to defend ourselves so much. It, it's a vicious cycle. I couldn't agree with that more. And that's why we're starting by talking about the root of the problem. Look, I've been attacked by a shitload of women. I, Trust me, I got stories for days. I fucking named my outhouse after one of the women in the industry, if that gives you guys an idea. <laughs> like, literally, you guys know I have this song about the Allie Brown house. So that kind of is a giveaway of who it was. <laughs> and, um, at a brown house where you can pee and poop. <laughs> uh, guys, one of these days. Um, but here's my question back to you, Kristen, because I think so much of what we're seeing in our industry is just assumed patterns from the corporate mm -hmm. world. Right, because oh, people think yeah. that we need to act a certain way and do certain things in certain patterns, right? This yeah. is what I believe happens in corporate America. You know better than I do, so I'd love to get your take. Mm -hmm. This idea of women having to be more defensive, they have to work harder. And the truth is, is at the top, both in the dog industry and in corporate America, it's typically a good old boys club. And mm -hmm. there's only room for one peer slash woman that they will oh, allow. For. And so that woman has to vehemently defend that position and yeah. in order to become, quote unquote, one of the boys. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to identify that back in the day and I used to be very judgmental against women. And I still am very, very sorry about it. I've come a long way. But Kristen, tell mm -hmm. me what your stance, like what your idea on that is. It's like, yeah, there's still we know there's still bitches in the dog industry. We're not denoting mm -hmm. that. But how much of it, of it is actually potentially a result of, of this toxicity that's at our deeper level. Oh, I agree a hundred percent on that. Because if you look at any board of directors, like for example, one of the corporate organizations I was at, and when you have a table of leadership, it's called the SLT, a senior leadership table. There's always use, there's always one token woman. So most of the time she is a normal white woman or she's not a woman of color. And if you look at her behavioral traits, even in like, if you guys, I don't know if anybody notices me, like I have a lot of masculine traits when I talk and when I kind of my energy and things like that, that is just deeply, deeply ingrained to actually present a uh, kind of like empowered to actually have some leadership, to actually have presence where people are actually listening to you. Yeah. Something that's actually recognized by yeah. the 
Rose Club. It's acceptable. Yeah. So what you have to do, what, you know, and I believe this is what's happening is you legit have to fucking mimic a lot of the traits you're seeing from the males. Because if you are, you know, I don't, and again, there is bitches, like there's bitches everywhere. Fuck yeah. There's some, and I've worked with some really fucking bitchy, you know, women uh, leadership presidents too. Don't get me wrong. But what you have to essentially do, and I feel this is happening with a lot of the women in the large organizations, you have to mimic those toxic, this, those toxic masculine traits and play part of the bo- good old boys club because that is basically your golden ticket in. So, and if you divert, if you are divergent from that, usually kind of like what Matt, what happened with Maggie, it's like, oh, fuck, you know, she was starting to kind of go up and she started becoming divergent. You are immediately a fucking threat immediately and what happens and this is what i see in corporate because it's happened to me in corporate what happens is you start getting shut down and then you start getting beat up not beat up not beat up um physically but also mentally you start getting gaslighted and the shame sit the same shit fucking happens and i see this in other organizations too in the dog training industry the dog walking industry too as well so it's like you have to personify yourself to be this this person that who you truly authentically aren't but if you're like fuck you know and i i want to say this too I know there's some people that don't have good intentions, but the majority of these women, they probably did have good intentions. And this is the way they thought they were their way in. But because of consistently living a new pa- a pattern of who they really are, it starts to become who they are. You know, your thoughts become your actions, your actions become words, and that's you become yeah. that person. It so super ingrained, which yeah. Aaron, I really want to bring Aaron on here just yes. a second. Um, Aaron said, yeah, inter- it's internalized misogyny. Many yes. women believe that the only way they can survive is to be accepted by men, and that means attacking women. Yes. It's a massive undertake. You know what? Fuck it, Aaron. I'm just going to bring you on. Um, give me a moment. Let me read through the other comments, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and, and take your mic off, because Aaron's got such a like physically powerful voice, too. I love Aaron more. Can anybody tell? Like, I feel like Aaron's one of my own, which you technically still are. See, so... I've got clients that also, basically all of us here that are going to be on this discussion panel all work with professional women dog trainers. We just offer something slightly different. So, you know, that's part of like, hey, the solution's already fucking here. We just need to be supporting one another. I'm really excited. Okay. Celine says, yes, my draw to Maggie and her stuff and groups is that my community is that it has always felt very supportive, even if it is a push because it, uh, because it is that I've uh, what I felt I needed, it, which is true. We all need the extra push, but not without feeling like we're under fucking attack is what I feel like I hear Celine say. Um, she says, every time I'm in other groups or I put myself out there, I've been in a hot seat or I just watch from the shadows because I can see how other people are treated. And that's the thing. People are always like, oh, how much? Or, oh, this or, oh, that. Or why do I have to get on the phone with you? And it's like, because the number one thing that I need to know is if you're nice. Mm. If you want other people, if you like to play in the sandbox with other people that are supportive and safe, because if I get one fucking inkling of an iota, that's not the case. You're fucking out. Like that's the one thing I'm the most hardcore about. And that's, Mm. it shows up with, with what, you know, people experience in the group. And that's why you see, I believe that that's a secret to my client successes that do really well is because they're in a safe place. They can actually fucking do the work. Right, the work's already hard enough. It doesn't need to be more complicated by fucking getting slaughtered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maggie, Maggie, can I interrupt with one thing yeah. really quick? I see a lot of hazing, like an initiation hazing. Oh. If you can oh. fucking stand the fire, then you can maybe play with us one day. Oh my God, oh my God, that's so true. Oh, all right, oh God, I'm so, I'm like, <laughs> I'm in overload right now. I'm doing, remember where I get manic? I'm like, ha ah. <laughs> doing a thing <laughs> yes yeah, Simone says fuck my brain is going wild about these topics so much shit happening so many things need to be said fuck yeah speaking of you know what like I know there's a couple of other comments here but I just I really want to bring Aaron on let me find you my dear you know something I love about you Maggie is you 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 don't want people to be a dick but you're not actually a dick hater <laughs> I know I fucking I thank you I'm like I'm, 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 I got all the love, man. I love cock. 
And I love that it <laughs> is attached to. Look, like, but, you, know. you know, like Larry Crone, you guys all know. Look, you want to know why his YouTube channel is going so well? Because it fucking helped him up with the shit to get it done for him. So he didn't have to think about it. Like, you know, same thing with Duke. Duke works with me for a year. Like, I love my dudes that I work with. You know, I'm not a postman, but they're so far and few. There's so few of them <laughs> that, I, that I actually work with. They're still safe bringing in. So, yeah, I'm not against that. Thank you for saying that. All right, Aaron, I've uh, unmuted you, so I think you're. I'm waiting for your end to accept it. Ah, you guys, so amazing. Maggie. Oh my God, you're here. Uh, you know, I'm Aaron. Here. So I was thinking earlier on in this call about the story of you, and I almost said, and I was like, ah, no. So I'm going to share it now. Maybe <laughs> like Aaron. when we went go to go get the fucking rental car. I was thinking about that as soon as I came on the webinar. Yep. Oh my God. Would you like to tell everybody, you want to just start with that story and then tell everybody sure. who you are? Sure. <laughs> I'll start with the story and then I'll introduce myself. Yeah. The um, story's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So we were at uh, Maggie's place for a, a retreat and in true fashion for our group, we hadn't planned very well, like how we were actually going to get to the airport at the end of it. <laughs> so the night before we're scrabbling around like, fuck, we should probably book a taxi or a rental car or something. And um, we ended up, because you live in a very, very small town, um, nothing was open that night. So we went to, what was it, Enterprise? Was that it, Maggie? Enterprise? Yep. We booked yep, it we with Enterprise, yep. Yeah, we booked it the night, the night before, no, yeah, the night before online. And then we went in the next morning to pick it up. And there was a, you know, mediocre white dude sitting behind the desk <laughs> who is like, oh, no, you don't have a booking. And we're like, uh, yeah, we booked it last night. And so instead of apologizing and being like, oh shit, I'm really sorry, let's see what we can organize for you. He started to tell us how we should have actually booked it. And here's the phone number that's on this business card that's only available in the store that was closed when you needed it to book it. And you obviously just booked it wrong and that's why you have no car. <laughs> It was amazing. I, I just like the fact that I didn't end up in jail in North Carolina is just like a miracle to me. Really. I know. Well, there's but three of us his, standing there, and he's three just like, women. You don't know how to use that their internet. You gotta log in. <laughs> just like what the fuck? But it was his whole attitude and the condescension and the whole just like y'all are stupid. But I was like, dude. You have the, the three of us standing here. You have no fucking idea who we are or the things that we have dealt with or the things that we do. Like, Jesus. No, that was after a very intense week of having yeah. a lot of very similar conversations about the industry. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, and already wound up. <laughs> I know, exactly. So so why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are? Because you've got, like, you, you're on top of this stuff. Like, you're fucking brilliant when it comes to, to these topics <laughs> and issues. And you mm. also do consulting, correct? Like, you also I work do. with trainers. I do, I do. I work with trainers. Um, I also still work with dog owners as well. Um, and my kind of forte niche with trainers is women with trauma because um, part of the reason I'm on top of this stuff is because I've done a shitload of my own work through my own trauma in my life. Um, and it's just such a big passion for me because I genuinely believe that the industry attracts women with trauma because it's safer to work with animals than it is to work with people. Um, and then you know, it, it can end up being a real hindrance in building a business, in being able to kind of navigate when you've got fucking predators, you know, at the top of the industry. And then you've got people who are just trying to survive and deal with the trauma that they have that is hindering them from making decisions they would otherwise make. That's not a safe match. And so I'm really, really passionate about helping people get to a point where they can work through their trauma, whatever that looks like for them, and just start to understand that. And I'd like to also offer in there that you have a personal kind of more intimate relationship in terms of having seen this stuff up close mm -hmm. and Right. Yeah, and so yeah. you're in this really like very just like everybody else on this panel in this situation where you're not only in it working with other professionals, but you've actually witnessed this stuff um, and seen seen some very predatory behavior from certain yeah. people in the industry. And so yeah, this is not just like an in theory kind of kind of no. thing. No, this is real and personal. And um, and so you remember, so that that trainer and, and his uh, partner and I were really good friends. And I had that really long talk with her when we were in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, so she's actually gone back to him and is no longer speaking to me. And so it's even more personal for me. Um, 
with that because it just strong women who are able to be manipulated by these men because they are so fucking good at what they do. These men are so good and they position themselves where anybody, nobody's going to believe it. And that really, I think is my biggest point that I want to say is that what, what we need to do to start changing the culture is believe women. Mm. That's, that's the first step because when all of this came out with this particular trainer and we started contacting organizations and contacting people who were hosting him and the amount of pushback and attack that we got from female trainers who follow yeah. and support these male trainers was huge. And that women need to believe women. Men need to believe women. But women, we fucking need to believe each other, even if it sounds like it couldn't possibly be true, even if it's the biggest like mind fuck for us ever. That's where it needs to start. Dude, Holly just made a comment. Yes, believe women. We are all so fucking gaslit, we can't see straight. Yes, uh-huh, absolutely. And then that, I think, feeds into that defensiveness that we have or that women have in the industry. And like I was saying, that internalized misogyny where you believe the only way you can get ahead is to please the men, get accepted by the men, and they're all attacking women, so that's what you have to do. And then you just stop believing because if you believe them when you're in that position, then you end up having to look at, well, fuck, what have I actually been doing? Who have I actually been supporting? So it's much easier for women to just say, nope, I don't believe it. You're a liar. Therefore, I can keep my little life that I've built intact rather than shit. This is going to blow everything up, but it's the right thing to do. Mm. Oh my God, you guys, this is so powerful. I just looked up at the time and I'm like, no, we've got like four minutes left. <laughs> we've got like four minutes left. Um, Kristen and I actually have a, a scheduled meeting for some marketing stuff. So Kim, uh, Kim says, if I, if I didn't like Cox so much, I'd totally be a lesbian. Fuck, we need to love right. each other. <laughs> I, I've been seeing a lot of you ladies like make those jokes recently. Like I just, I just think right now, there's just, it's starting to hit a really pivotal point. And I feel like there's a, there's a tipping point that is, is very much happening, like as we speak. And I think part of what we need to be thinking about is what can we do to, to help guide that, that tipping point? Cause I think we need to have one. The whole revolution thing is real. Like it needs to happen. So let me kind of ask one last question. God, there's so many things that I still want to ask everyone. Um, I'm like, we're going to have to do a part two. <laughs> Who wants a part two? We need to have this. Yes. Um, but one last question is if, you know, in your mind with where things are at right now, what is one thing do you think that all of these ladies uh, could, could start to do to kind of, to put themselves in the right direction and to start to, you know, to start to make a change for the, for even just themselves. I think mine, just to throw mine out there, cause I'm, can actually throw one out there is literally getting yourself into a safe support system right no matter who it is contact one somebody in here and even if it's not one of us we know other people like find a support system that's going to help you with what you need just from the the strategic level but do it in a way that you're just you know you're going to be fucking safe you just you won't even you don't even have to think about it right and you're just going to keep building like that that's my recommendation but anyway who wants to go next <laughs> That was going to be mine. <laughs> was I know you get the support system. Well, and feel yeah. free to like, pick a part that of it that is is critical for you because there's so many reasons why too. Yep. Well, because so so you don't have to do it alone because for like for so many different levels, you know, as a species, human beings were designed to be a part of a group, right, for survival. So on so many different levels, being part of that safe group um, impacts and affects and builds confidence and allows us to show up as our more authentic selves. Um, and the more we are showing up as our authentic self and being accepted by that group, the more confidence we have to go and then put that authenticity out in the world as well, which I personally think dog trainers have um, an obligation almost to do that because clients need authenticity. Clients need women who are like, this is me and I am showing up. I am helping you not hiding behind like the professional bullshit that goes on out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and like I, oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, carry on, carry on. Nope. No, like 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 what she's saying there is exactly what's happening too in the industry with the mentors that we do have, or like the schools that we have for trainers and all this kind of stuff. Is I it was ingrained in me to keep my white hat on. 
Be professional, be professional. Don't show your vulnerability. Don't yep. show your weakness. Don't yep. show any of those things to people. And when I started working with Maggie, that's when I finally started to become comfortable with doing so because I actually had a community that encouraged the authenticity and the results that it's had within my business and my life is amazing because I have that support system. Right. And, and you've been no, be yourself. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is as I tell you, like encourage you guys to go do certain stuff, it's oftentimes things that most people in the industry would tell you you're crazy. Don't yeah. do it that way. Why would you do that? So it's like, you gotta, yeah, you gotta find the right support system, but also it needs to be safe, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're teaching high end stuff. It doesn't fucking make a difference if you don't, if you can't fucking relax and actually do your work. <laughs> so mm -hmm. anyway, sorry, there you go. Yeah. Good stuff. You guys. <laughs> What about, what about for you, Kristen? Uh, what do you yeah. think is one of those components that just I am, make Yeah, I'm in total agreement with what everybody just said. Like really just, I want to use the word, I want to use this phrase, we heal by not hiding. Mm -hmm. So go out there, ladies, go out there, show your true authentic self, even though it's a little bit of vulnerability, you know, use strategic vulnerability, but also ladies, also, use your business to propel your own healing and getting out there use that shit for a force of good like maggie talks about oh and always God. remember when we hide in the shadows we're not healing our shadow aspects oh my god that's such a good point because i also see that a lot where women will try to like burn down the business mm -hmm. for the sake of self-care right mm -hmm. like you see that being taught like oh yeah if you're burned out or if you've got compassion fatigue or if things suck then just do something different and it's like yeah but then you just you never actually heal your shit you're just doing something different and the same pattern's gonna creep up and and nail you next time so it's like yeah use your business and through whatever comes up as a discomfort you deal with that in the moment like your business is gonna offer all kinds of learning and and healing op opportunities right mm -hmm. and that's why i think like what you do aaron too is really cool because it's more that understanding how different things are impacted through trauma, which I get because I, you know, I'm a survivor as well. And there's times where like getting stalked on the fucking freeway last weekend was a huge uh -huh. triggering event for me, like surprisingly <laughs> so. And then I had a panic attack on the freeway last night because I was driving to go see Emily, my other client, one of my other clients and in Asheville. And there was this huge rain, like on the freeway, it was like coming down in literal sheets where you couldn't see. And then I got tunnel vision and a semi passed me. And it was just all of these things happened. And I literally had a panic attack and had to pull over. And I knew it was having built up for a couple of days, you know, and it's just yep. like, oh God, <laughs> you know, but here's, here's the beautiful thing. This is what I think is so wonderful about safe environments is it's not just about you know rainbows and fucking sugar cookies oh everybody's safe it's like no it's it's being able to recognize yeah things are a little bit more tricky things are a little bit more difficult but it's not unexpected it's part of the process it's you, you don't feel like you're thrown off every single fucking time you turn around like the example that crystal shared with you guys finding a banker you're gonna think you're going crazy if you don't know what to watch out for so if you have a coach be like yo girl just go find a female banker bam problem solved you see what I mean? Like it doesn't, <laughs> men do not understand that that's a level of bullshit that women have to have to deal with. They, when we say, Oh, well, I'm having a difficult time with my banker. They're like, well, psh, what are you on your period or whatever? It's you, <laughs> they, you have to fix yourself somehow. It was a way you talk to him or whatever. Like, so they give bad advice all the time. And I don't blame them for that either. It's just like when Larry Crone was surprised that tools were actually a big deal over in the UK. It's like, dude, where have you been? Where have you been? He just <laughs> figured this out like a couple weeks ago. It's like, I've been over here screaming about this stuff for almost eight years. And now Larry Crohn's figured it out. And he's a fucking God. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I guess so, no, you just got to look at like, you want to pat him on the back and be like, you're still doing a good job, buddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> God. All right, ladies. Well, we got to run. Um, I want to thank you guys all, Crystal, Kristen, Aaron, for jumping on and helping with this conversation because it's definitely not a one person, you know, it's not a one person job. <laughs> it is an all of us job. So I'm so thankful to everybody that joined us live. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think we should do a round two? Because I'm definitely yes, open. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. You guys all done. How about yeah. you, Crystal? You Heck yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Everybody's like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> over and over again. All right. Well, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us.
And Love you, Maggie. Uh, we will schedule another one. And so I'll see you guys around. Bye, everyone. Great day, ladies. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Guys. Bye.